In this video, I'd like to talk about function rules from equations. And essentially, in this video, I want to focus on rewriting a given equation with multiple variables in terms of one variable. So we'll rewrite it as a function of one of the variables. So for this problem, we're given this equation with both a and b, and we're asked to write a formula for g of b in terms of b. So our function will be in terms of b, and we'll call our function g. So these can be a little bit tricky since it might be misleading on which variable you want to solve for. So you want to think when you have a function f of x, and so this is in terms of x, it's usually written with all of the x terms and the constants on one side of the equation. So as an example, you might see f of x equals 4x squared minus 2x plus 3. This is a quadratic function, but this function f of x is in terms of x. And usually the function f of x is equal to y. So if you were given a an equation with both x and y and asked to write it in terms of x, you would solve it for y. You would put all the x terms and the constant, this 3 here, on the other side equal to the function. So when you see this equation and this question, we want to write this formula for g of b in terms of b. So basically, we want to put all the b terms and the number terms on the right side, and so it would be g of b equals some b terms with the constant as well. So in other words, we're going to solve for the other variable, which in this case is a, since a will be the function g of b. So let's start with this problem. Let me make some room here and just rewrite it. We have a minus 7 is 3 times b plus 2. And since we're solving it for a, we want to essentially move everything that's not in a on the left side to the other side. But we can also distribute here, just so that we can combine like terms. So we have a minus 7 is 3b plus 6. And let's add 7 to each side. So that a is 3b plus 13. And since we solved it for a and we put the b terms and the constant on one side of the equation, this a is equal to g of b. So in other words, we can conclude that g of b, since it's equal to a, is equal to this 3b plus 13, which is exactly what we'd put in this box here, 3b plus 13. So let's do some more problems, but in all of these, whatever your function is in terms of to solve these problems, you want to solve for the other variable. So this is in terms of b, and a is the other variable. So to get g of b, you want to solve for a here, which is what we did. So let's move forward. And this one, we're given an equation with both x and y, and we want to write a formula for f of x in terms of x. So essentially, we're going to solve for the other variable, or in our case, we're going to solve for y, since y is f of x. So we can rewrite this, minus 5x minus 4y is negative 8. And again, we're going to solve it for y. So let's move the x terms to the other side. Or essentially, we're going to isolate this y term and see if we can get y equals something. So we can add... 5x on each side. And over here, they cancel. We get minus 4y is 5x minus 8. And then to get y by itself, we want to divide everything by negative 4. But of course, we have to divide everything by negative 4. And when we do that, this just becomes y, since something divided by itself is always 1. And we get minus 5x over 4. And then minus 8 divided by minus 4 would be positive 2. And remember, y is f of x. So we can conclude that f of x is this linear function minus 5x over 4 plus 2. 
So this right here, what f of x is equal to, that's what we would put in as our answer here. And let's keep moving. So this equation is in terms of both u and v. And we're asked to write a formula for g of u in terms of u. So we're going to solve for the opposite variable. We will solve for v, since v is our function g, which is going to be in terms of u. So let's just rewrite it. We have minus 12u plus 3 is 8v plus 1. And we're going to solve for v. So let's get v on one side of the equation by itself. So we have to get rid of this minus 1 here. So we will subtract 1 on each side. So we have minus 12u plus 2 equals 8v. And lastly, we want to get rid of this multiplication. So we will use division. And we just have to divide everything by that. So we get minus 12u plus 2 over 8 is equal to v. And notice all of these numbers are divisible by 2. They're all even numbers. So we could, in theory, divide the numerator and the denominator by 2 just to simplify it. So this is not something you need to do for the exercise, but you can certainly redo it since smaller numbers are usually easier to deal with. So dividing each of the terms in the numerator and the term in the denominator by 2, we will get minus 6u plus 1 over 4. And if you wanted, you could have written these as individual fractions, minus 12u over 8 plus 2 over 8, and then simplified them each separately. And of course, if you did that, you can actually simplify the u term even further. Since 6 divided by 4, those are both even numbers, and so we can divide them each by 2. So we get minus 3u over 2 plus 1 fourth. So this is the simplest version of this equation for v, but remember that v is our function g. It is g of u. So in our box, we would put this equation, which I apologize, it's a little messy, but minus 3u over 2, let me write that, minus 3u over 2 plus 1 fourth. Though I'm pretty certain that if you plug in this answer here, it would also work in the Khan Academy exercise.